Hi Candles, welcome to Candela Learnings. It's me Navya Prajit, your Max Tutor. In previous session, we have learned the geometrical meaning of zeros of linear polynomial and quadratic polynomial. For any linear polynomial, the graph will be a straight line and it will have exactly one zero. And for quadratic polynomial, the graph will be in the shape of a parabola and it will have at most two zeros. And here we are going to check the pattern for a cubic polynomial. Let's take the example x cubed minus 4x. First, let's put some random values for x, which is minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And we are going to check the corresponding value of y here. So y will be equal to minus 1 cube minus 4 into minus 1, which is equal to minus 1 cube is again minus 1. So 4 into minus 1 is minus 4. So minus minus 4, which is plus 4. So it becomes 3. Then if x is 0, y becomes 0 cube minus 4 into 0, which is again 0. And if x is 1, then the corresponding value of y will be 1 cube minus 4, which is minus 3. Then if x is 2, y becomes 2 cube 8 minus 4 into 2, which is 0. And if x is 3, then y becomes 3 cube that is 27 minus 4 into 3 which is 12. It becomes 15. And we are going to mark these points here. So it is minus 1 comma 3, then 0 comma 0, then 1 comma minus 3, 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 15. And here let's join these points. And you can see a curve and this graph cuts x-axis at three points, which means there are exactly three zeros. And you can see the points, they are minus 2 comma 0, 0 comma 0 and 2 comma 0. And we know that the 0, which means you can see three points and the x-coordinate of that point is the 0 of this polynomial. Here it is minus 2, 0 and 2. We got three zeros. They are the x coordinate of the points where the graph cuts x axis. So, in this case, it is minus 2, 0, and 2. And let's check for another example y equal to x cube. If x is minus 1, y becomes minus 1 itself. If x is 0, y equal to 0 itself. If x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, then y becomes 2 cube which is 8 and let's mark these points minus 1 comma minus 1 0 0 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 8 and let's join these points we are getting a different curve right it is not similar to the first graph so we can tell that there is no fixed shape for a cubic polynomial and this graph cuts x-axis at exactly one point, which means there is only one zero for this polynomial. And the point is zero, zero. And the x-coordinate of that point is zero, which means that is the zero of this polynomial. And let's check one more example so that y equal to x cube minus x square. I'll show you the graph. You can see a different curve here. And this graph cuts x-axis at exactly two points, which is 0, 0 and 1, 0. And the x-coordinate of that point, which is 0 and 1, those are the zeros of this polynomial. So we have came through three graphs and, and it does not have a fixed shape, which means for any cubic polynomial, there is no fixed shape. And for a cubic polynomial, it will have at most three zeros. Either zero zeros or one zero or two zeros or three zeros, but no more than that. It will have at most three zeros. And now I'll show you some graphs and I want you to answer how many zeros are there in each cases. In the first case, you can see the graph cuts x-axis at exactly one point which means there is only one zero. Then in the second case, can you tell how many zeros are there? 
the graph cuts x axis at two points which means there are two zeros and from the figure you can tell that it is a quadratic polynomial and it is open downwards like a closed vessel which means a is negative the coefficient of x square is negative in this case and in the third graph you can see that the graph cuts x axis at three points which means there are three zeros this is how we'll be finding the number of zeros in each cases just by looking at the points where the graph cuts x axis the x coordinate of that point is the zero and let's take the fourth graph it is a straight line which means it is a linear polynomial and it cuts x axis at one point which means there is one zero then the fifth graph it is also a parabola which touches x axis at one point which means there is one zero and the last figure you can see one two three four there are four points which cuts x axis which means there are four zeros for this polynomial and now we are going to enter into the topic division algorithm first we'll be learning factor theorem if a is a zero of the polynomial p of x then x minus a divides p of x or x minus a is a factor of p of x for example if 2 is a factor of a polynomial then x minus 2 is a factor which divides this polynomial with this theorem we'll be doing one problem Find all the zeros of 2x cube plus x square minus 6x minus 3 if two of its zeros are root 3 and minus root 3. I told you if 2 is a 0 then x minus 2 is a factor which divides that polynomial. Similarly, if root 3 is a 0 then x minus root 3 is one of the factor. And minus root 3 is another 0 which means x minus minus root 3 is another factor which means x plus root 3 and these two are factors of this polynomial and a plus b into a minus b equal to a square minus b square so it becomes x square minus root 3 square which is x square minus 3 and we will be dividing this polynomial with this term x square minus 3 polynomial is 2x cube plus 2x cube plus x square minus 6x minus 3 right yeah and this is the dividend and the divisor which is x square minus 3 we will be writing it here and using long division method we are going to solve this 2x cube first step is dividing 2x cube with this term x square and it is equal to 2x and we will be writing it as the first term of quotient and the next step is multiplying this 2x with this term 2x into x square which is 2x cube then 2x into minus 3 which is minus 6x then we are going to subtract it 2x cube minus 2x cube is 0 then x square minus 0 then minus 6x minus minus 6x which is 0 again x square then minus 3 is left we will be writing it down then the next step is again dividing this term with this term which is x square by x square which is equal to 1 so we will be writing it here plus 1 then the next step is multiplying this 1 with these terms so 1 into x square which is again x square then 1 into minus 3 to minus 3 and subtracting it we get 0 as the remainder so to check the step to check whether our step is correct we will be multiplying divisor into quotient plus reminder we should get the result as dividend we will be checking it now so the divisor which is x square minus 3 then the quotient which is 2x plus 1 plus reminder which is 0 so we don't have to write it we should get di uh, dividend which is 2x cube plus x square minus 6x minus 3 mm -hmm. x square into 2x which is 2x cube then x square into 1 which is plus x square then minus 3 then x square into 1 which is plus x square 
then minus 3 into 2x which is minus 6x minus 3 into 1 which is minus 3 yeah we got the dividend again which means the steps are correct so every time dividend equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder if p of x and g of x are any two polynomials with g of x not equal to 0 then we can find polynomials q of x and r of x such that p of x equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x and where r of x not equal to 0 or degree of r of x less than degree of g of x and this result is known as the division algorithm and we will be doing some problems based on this. Divide 3x square minus x cube minus 3x plus 5 by x minus 1 minus x square and verify the division algorithm. We know that division algorithm is dividend equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. For that we have to find quotient right using long division method. We know that this polynomial is not in the correct order. So we will be rearranging it first based on the descending order of their degree. So first term will be x cube minus x cube then plus 3x square minus 3x plus 5. This is the dividend. Then the divisor that is also not in the correct order. So we will be, we'll be rearranging it minus x square plus x minus 1 and we are going to divide it minus x cube plus 3x square minus 3x plus 5 right yeah then we are dividing it with minus x square plus x minus 1 minus x square plus x minus 1 and the first step you know that we are going to divide minus x cube with minus x square so minus x cube by minus x square which is equal to x and multiplying the first term of quotient with the first term of divisor which is x into minus x square that is minus x cube then x into x which is x square then x into minus 1 which is minus x and we are subtracting it minus x cube minus minus x cube which is 0 then 3x square minus x square which is 2x square then minus 3x minus minus x which is minus 3x plus x which is minus 2x plus 5 and the next step is dividing 2x square with minus x square so it becomes 2x square by minus x square which is minus 2 so writing it as the second term of quotient then the step is multiplying minus 2 with this term we get 2x square then minus 2 into x which is minus 2x then minus 2 into minus 1 which is plus 2 then subtracting we get 5 minus 2 only 3 is left and that is the remainder here and also we have to verify the division algorithm for that the divisor which is minus x square plus x minus 1 into x minus 2 plus reminder we should get dividend we are checking it minus x square into x which is minus x cube then minus x square into minus 2 which is 2x square then x into x which is x square minus 2x minus 1 into x which is minus x then minus 1 into minus 2 which is plus 2 then plus 3 is left and it becomes minus x cube plus 3x square minus 3x plus 5 yeah we got the dividend so divisor into quotient plus reminder we should get dividend so the division algorithm is verified here and moving into the next question if the zeros of a polynomial x cube minus 3x square plus x plus 1 are a minus b a a plus b find a and b so here we know that for a cubic polynomial in the form 
ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d when alpha, beta and gamma are the zeros of this polynomial then taking some of these zeros which is alpha plus beta plus gamma we should get minus b by a. Then taking alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma alpha we should get c by a. Then taking the product of the zeros we should get alpha beta gamma equal to minus d by a. And generally we can write the polynomial as x cube minus alpha plus beta plus gamma into x square plus alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma into x minus alpha beta gamma. And comparing this with the polynomial given in the question, we can tell that alpha plus beta plus gamma here is minus 3. Sorry, minus of minus 3 which is plus 3. Then here alpha is a minus b. Beta is a. Then gamma is a plus b. And a plus a plus a which is 3a. Minus b plus b is 0. 3a is equal to 3 and a becomes 1. So we have found out the value of a and we have to find the value of b for that. This alpha beta gamma equal to here alpha is a minus b then beta is a then gamma is a plus b. Here taking these two terms it is in the form of a plus b into a minus b which is equal to a square minus b square. a square minus b square into a which is equal to a cube minus a b square right yeah and it becomes we know that a cube is 1 minus b square which is equal to here product is equal to minus 1 so we get b square equal to 1 plus 1 2 and b equal to plus or minus root 2. So a equal to 1 and b equal to plus or minus root 2. So we have found out the values for a and b using that alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to minus b by a and alpha beta plus beta gamma plus gamma delta equal to c by a and alpha beta gamma equal to minus d by a. So this question was based on the relation between zeros and coefficients of a cubic polynomial. Then I will give you a super tip. A linear polynomial, you know that the graph is a straight line. Yeah. Then for quadratic polynomial, it is in the shape of a parabola. U shaped curve which is called a parabola. Then if you are waiting for the tip for cubic polynomial, I am sorry we don't have because for a cubic polynomial it does not have a fixed shape. So for a linear polynomial it is a straight line and for a quadratic polynomial it is a U shaped curve which is called a parabola and for a cubic polynomial there is no fixed shape. And in this session we have learnt the geometrical meaning of zeros of a cubic polynomial and there are at most three zeros for a cubic polynomial and in the next session we will be doing few questions based on this. Now it is time for you to relax. Thank you.